In part two of this series, we introduced a vector field F and showed that it was irrotational, that is, that its curl was zero. We then introduced the idea of the potential phi and calculated the phi for our vector field F. Finally, we used phi to evaluate the path integral of F dot dr along a path between two given points. In fact, along any path between those points. I'm going to do something similar here, except that this time I'm not going to prove that the curl is zero. I'd like to leave that as an exercise for you to try. Here's the f that I'm going to use. Its curl is zero, but you should check it. That means that this f is irrotational, and so it possesses a potential such that f equals grad phi. I'm going to find the potential phi. Do you remember how that worked? We have to write down the three components of that vector equation at the bottom. d phi by dx is f1, d phi by dy is f2, and d phi by dy is f3. That gives us three first order partial differential equations shown here. We have to now find a phi that satisfies all three of those equations simultaneously. We can do it by going through the equations one by one. Starting with number one, I'm going to integrate it with respect to x. On the left hand side I get phi. On the right I have an integral. The integral of 4xyz dx. y and z are constant as far as x is concerned and 4x integrates to 2x squared. So we get 2x squared yz plus an integration constant. But that integration constant is only constant as far as x is concerned. So it's really c of y and z. Our next step is to take this phi and substitute it into the next equation, number 2. That means we'll have to calculate the left hand side d phi by dy. That's easy enough. It's just 2x squared z plus dc dy. We have to insist that this left hand side is equal to the right hand side of number 2. That's 2x squared z plus 3. It's clear that the 2x squared z's cancel, which leaves dc by dy equals 3. This is a little bit different to the original example we looked at, where we got dc by dy equals 0. In that original example, that meant that c didn't depend on y at all. Here c does depend on y. In fact, we can integrate that equation and get that c equals 3y plus another constant. I'm going to call the constant gamma. But gamma could depend on z. It can't depend on y because it's a constant as far as y is concerned, because we're doing a y integration. And c never depended on x in the first place, so that just leaves z. Let's now write out our potential again using this version of c. So now phi is 2x squared yz and we found plus 3y that comes from the c of yz plus the gamma of z. Equations 1 and 2 are now satisfied. That leaves number 3 which conveniently is at the top of the screen. We need to substitute this version of phi into the left hand side of 3 and do d phi dz. That will give 2x squared y. The 3y term will disappear on differentiation with respect to z, but the, there will still be a term plus d gamma by dz. Once again we must insist that this left hand side equals the right hand side of number 3. That's up here. It was 2x squared y. Once again we get some cancellation. This sort of cancellation always happens if you're doing things right. That leaves us d gamma by dz equals zero. That means that gamma doesn't depend on z. Gamma really is now a constant. So we can throw it away because it's part of a potential. We don't care what the constant is. That allows us to write out our final version of phi. 
2x squared yz plus 3y. I'm now going to do an integral of f dot dr along a path from the origin to a point p. I'll take p to be 2, 2, 3. Here's a picture. I've substituted f equals grad phi. So we've got the integral from 0 to p of grad phi dot dr. And remember how that works from part 1 of this presentation. It's just the integral from 0 to p of d phi. But the integral of d phi is phi. So we just have to evaluate phi between the starting and finishing points. That means substituting them in. 2, 2, 3 and 0, 0, 0. You can see phi at the top of the screen here, but let's write it out again. So we've got it nearby. Here's our integral, and in substituting 2, 2, 3, we get 2 times x squared, that's 2 squared, times y, that's 2, times z, that's 3, plus 3y, that's 3 twos, and when we substitute in the origin, phi is just 0 there. So altogether, that simplifies to 2 times 4 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 3 is 48, and 3 twos are 6 to add on, and that comes to 54. Once again, it's not particularly the value that we care about, but the fact that because phi is a potential and f is irrotational, this integral would have the same value whatever path we took from 0 to p. I'll conclude my presentation there.